I'm Owen Big Glenn. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, it's Saturday. This blog is going to be a little different. Um, well, not too much different. It'll be on a on, uh, little bit of motivation and things here. But I've had a lot of people reach out to me on YouTube and on Twitter and things like uh, other channels here asking me to talk a little bit about kind of my fitness regiment or what I call kind of optimizing your life outside of work. And I've talked about this a few times in various videos over the years. I also talk about it a fair bit in my book as well, because this is what I call optimizing your life kind of ties everything together. And when you get to my age, it's probably the most important thing you can be doing. For you young guys watching this in your 20s and, and, and early 30s, you know, it, it's going to play a much bigger part in your life moving forward. And I think the sooner you get into these habits and start developing this, the better off you're going to be. Because this has always been, since I was a teenager, staying in shape and working out and, and competing in sports has always been a part of my life since I was a, a you know, a, a, a teenager. And it, I've never let it go. It's always been the foundation for everything that I do. So I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that I do here, you know, to kind of stay in shape, uh, stay focused, stay energetic, um, and, and kind of give me, I guess you could call it, give you that competitive edge. Because I've had the privilege of knowing a lot of very successful people over the years. Some have become very good friends of mine and still are. Many of them have just you know casually met over the years. I can only count, I think, on one hand the number of people I've met that did not have a fairly solid what I call optimization routine. In other words, they eat right, they sleep, they have a regular uh, exercise regimen, they take care of themselves. When you want to get to a certain level in life, you're going to need that because it, and you'll see it, it ties everything together for you. Because if you don't, if I often say it, if you don't feel good or look good or, or lack energy, it's going to translate itself into other areas of your life. So for me as a realtor, I'm in a, what most people would consider to be a pretty high stress level job. It's seven days a week for the most part. I make my own schedule, but I'm generally working most weekends and I enjoy it. I take breaks for sure uh, every year. I like to take probably five weeks off a year if I can. But, you know, it's a high stress job. It never stops. Uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. My phone is always going. I get probably 30, 40 calls a day, 50, 60 emails a day. I've always got listings, always working with buyers. It's a fairly high stress job. If I didn't get enough sleep, if I didn't eat right, if I didn't exercise, I would not be able to perform anywhere near the level that I do, both physically, but also cognitively. You know, as a realtor, I'm doing a lot of reading and retaining. Uh, I'm writing contracts. I'm reading strata documents. I'm reading engineers' reports. Uh, you know, you need to be able to read and retain this stuff. And when you're tired or you're not feeling good, you know, it is you're greatly diminishing your productivity level. And you know, to get to my level, I have to brag in real estate. You've got to be at a high level here. And how I do that is through what I'm going to talk about here. So first and foremost, you know, you should have a regular exercise routine, no matter what your age is, even if you're watching this in your, in your 60s. You should have a regular uh, regimen of exercise. It could be anything, swimming, jogging, going for long walks. All that stuff is great to burn calories, keep your metabolism going. I'm also, though, a big believer in incorporating resistance training, especially when you get into your 30s, 40s, and beyond. You should be doing some weight training, resistance training, to keep some muscle mass. There's a lot of benefits. I won't get into it here uh, about doing resistance training and, and you know building and trying to keep muscle. You don't need to become a a bodybuilder but you know I think that cardiovascular exercise say riding your bike for a hundred or 50 60 kilometers a week going for three or four bike rides is great but you need to top that up with some resistance training especially for the rest of your body would be your upper body as well you know dieting a diet is also super important everybody is different with their metabolism you have to experiment with this with me, I keep a high protein diet because I do a lot of resistance training. I do a lot of cardiovascular and I do a lot of interval training, but I also do a lot of resistance training with heavy weight. 
Uh, so the protein will you know, help your muscles recover and it keeps some muscle mass on, especially at my age. I use a high protein, uh, relatively uh, low fat, you gotta have some fat, and I use a moderate carb diet. Some people can, as a matter of fact, mine is probably moderate to a little bit higher. I eat a fair number of carbs, but it's good carbs, complex carbs, that kind of thing. Uh, some people cannot get away with that. It depends on your metabolism. Some people need to keep their carbs quite low if they want to you know, gain lean muscle mass and not put on too much weight. That's where you have to experiment a little bit with your metabolism. One thing I do avoid though, I've got a little bit of a sweet tooth and I will indulge in some, some you know, uh, sugary desserts every now and again. But for the most part, sugar is a total killer. Uh, you should be trying to, by greatly reducing your sugar intake, will go a long way. Uh, I keep my sugar content f quite low. I'll indulge every now and again, but for the most part, people should try and avoid sugar at all costs. Sleep. This one is, oh, this sleeper is a real, sleep is a real sleeper, in my opinion. Uh, most people do not get enough sleep you have to really schedule your sleep. If you just let it go and I'll sleep when I sleep and let your schedule dictate when you're gonna sleep, you're gonna be sleep deprived. Most people these days, according to my trainer and what I read, are sleep deprived. I see it all the time in my general working as a, as a realtor and just being out with around people. You can tell some people are just sleep deprived. Their cognitive ability is impaired a great deal. How they think, how they can retain things. When you're tired, you're, you're running at a low capacity for that. So I always try and get a minimum of eight, nine hours sleep a day. Uh, I am a early to bed, early to rise person. Everybody works different. Back when I was in my 20s, I was a uh, late to bed, late to rise. But probably 10 years ago, I switched to, you know, trying to be in bed by about nine or 9.30. And I usually get up around 5.30. 545 sometimes a little earlier sometimes I'm up as early as five o'clock 5 a.m. other times and other times I'm in bed as early as nine o'clock uh, but you want to try and get that eight nine hours of quality sleep you have to schedule it uh, and listen I go off the rails all the time too I'll go out for a late weekend uh, for a couple of nights or when I'm away on vacation but for the most part, I'm pretty regimented in my sleep. Try and get that eight or nine hours. Uh, drinking plenty of water, that one's been around for a long time. Most people are sleep deprived and dehydrated. As a matter of fact, I would say if you could do one thing for a month to, to make a big difference in your life would probably be to get a solid eight or nine hours of sleep and drink two or three gallons of water. Give that a go for a month, see how you feel. You're probably gonna lose weight, you're gonna feel better, uh, your cognitive ability will probably be improved a great deal as well. You know, supplements, I don't take too many supplements. Multivitamin, I take omega oils. Uh, I take a, a very high quality protein powder, protein drink twice a, a day, a vegan one after I train and then a whey one after. I don't scrimp on this stuff. I buy very high quality supplements. I don't buy my stuff at Costco. You can if you want. You pay for what you get though when it comes to supplements. Um, the other thing you know that comes at my age and you know getting a little more established and having a little bit of money is you know it affords you the luxury of making things a little easier so i do buy high quality protein powders uh, i can schedule eight or nine hours of sleep um, the other thing uh, i have a personal trainer uh, i go on and off with my personal trainer uh, but generally i don't use a trainer all the time maybe once a week or twice a week max um, I use it more for picking up new movements and just checking on my movements that I am doing, especially with some of my intensity training and circuit training and things like that. It's a nice luxury. You don't have to have that. It's only been the last three or four years that I've had a trainer. Um, the other nice thing that I have now is I do have a meal prep company. So I get my meals delivered uh, for Monday, Monday through Friday. Uh, I get uh, my lunches and dinners delivered. They're generally high protein, moderate carb. I do a lot of keto uh, 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 meals, which is basically no carbs. So it's like chicken strips, boneless chicken strips. It's a nice luxury to have because sometimes I'm out all day. I can grab a couple of these uh, meals to go and eat those at my office or when I'm out on the road or whatever else. Uh, it's, it's a nice benefit to have as you get going along and it saves me the time and everything else. 
The other last thing I'll do, I do some intermittent fasting. I don't do it every day, but probably four to five days a week I fast, meaning that I eat my meals in a small window. Generally, my window is 1 p.m. until 7.30, 8 p.m. So about a seven hour window is where I will eat. The rest of the time I'm just drinking water or uh, black coffee. Uh, you should try that. If you want, again, you've got to experiment with these things. Sometimes I'll do a intermittent window where I'm eating for maybe more like eight or nine hours. I'll have a late breakfast at 11. Uh, sometimes I won't start my first meal until 1 p.m. My last meal will be at 7 or 8 p.m. And just water and coffee in between. Try it. Uh, a good way to kickstart your metabolism, lose some weight, definitely keeps you mentally sharp when you intermittent fast. Most people eat too much, eat too frequently. You don't need nearly as many calories as most people think. Even if you're training, working out, doing resistance training, as long as you take in enough protein during that eating window, you should be fine. But a lot of it depends on just some experimenting. Everybody's metabolism and body reacts differently to it. But you need to have these things going for you. You have to have, it's one thing to work hard, make money, invest, all that stuff is great. That's half the equation. The other half of the equation is eating right, getting enough sleep, exercising. Um, it all ties together. Again, all the successful people, at least the majority that I know, that operate at a high level, uh, all have at least a, uh, an exercise routine, overall eat quite well, nutrition-wise, sleep-wise. Again, it all ties together. Never too early to start. The earlier you start, the better, because it just becomes part of your life after a while. It becomes normal. I'm Owen Big Len. As always, have a good Saturday. Have a good weekend. I'll see you next week.